fiery horse for the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hail Silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past and the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver, the Lone Ranger rides again. Whoa, Silver! Let's go, big fellow. I am still there. Dan Reed had left the Lone Ranger and Tonto in camp to ride into town for supplies. As he reined up at the hitch rail before the store, he noticed an excited group of men in front of the cafe across the road. A broad-shouldered, middle-aged man detached himself from the knot and came toward Dan with long strides. The rest of the group followed. Hey there, young man. Go and talk to you. Yes, sir. You just came into town, didn't you? <coughs> yes, sir, but well, I Speak up, think... son. It's all right. Which way did you come from? Well, I, I came from the south. And you came through Granger's Pass? I came through some sort of pass. Sort of a canyon with high sides. That's it. That's Granger's Pass. Well, this year's big Jim Granger himself, son. Don't be afraid of him. I'm not afraid. Now, yeah, tell me, boy. Did you meet anyone in the past? Did you see anything of a horseman? Yes, I... You did? did? Uh, riding what kind of a horse? What kind, son? A palomino? Yes, sir, that's what it was, hey, a hey, palomino. That's right. that that settles it. The sneaking skunk that stole my horse's head in south. I've got to get after him. I can ride over to the county seat and get the sheriff, Mr. Granger. By the time you get back, the thieving buzzard will be in Mexico. I'll go after him myself. Any of you got a horse saddle up? Yeah, uh, my horse is lame. Why not borrow the youngster's horse? It's a spry-looking critter. Uh, how about that? You want to make ten dollars? Well, I... I can't let anyone borrow Victor. Well, what's the matter? Don't you trust me? This is Jim Granger. He's the richest man in the state. Do you think I'll steal your horse? No, sir, it isn't that. It's just that, that Palomino only... you saw belongs to me. He's worth ten ordinary horses. He's been stolen. I've got to get after the thief. I'll pay you twenty dollars. Go on, son. Let Granger take your horse. You're wasting time. The thief's getting further all the time. Well, all right, then. Good. Now, what do you call the horse? Victor. Now, steady there, Victor. Now, here, lad, you take this. No, I don't want any money. Now, take this as a guarantee that I return. Go on, hold it till I come back. We'll saddle horses and follow you, Granger. No, don't bother. Sure. I'll handle a coyote if I can overtake him. Get up, Victor. Get up there. Come on. Later that day, when Dan Reed joined the Lone Ranger and Tonto in their camp a couple of miles south of town... He had an exciting story to tell. And when he came back to town, he was riding the Palomino and leading Victor. And what do you think he said about Victor? What? Now, what him say, Dan? Him like Victor? He said that Victor was the first horse he'd ever ridden that he liked as well as his Palomino. It's a mighty fine compliment, Dan. Especially when it comes from a man like Jim Granger. Do you know him, sir? Oh, I know of him. Then he really is a rich man? Yes, he has a big ranch at the south end of the pass. Oh. Him catch horse thief? 
He didn't have much to say about that. He told Pete that the thief would be around in the canyon, dead. Oh. When I left town, the men were getting ready to go for the body. Kimosabe, me hear hoofbeats. The one's coming this way. I hear him. Now, look. There. Well, tell him me now. That's Jim Granger. Why is he coming here? You tell him where we camp? No, Tano, I didn't tell him a thing. You left a clean track, Dan. He could easily follow you. Well, if he thinks he can buy my Tano, horse, get he's... back to the brush with me. Uh-huh. Come on, we'll let Granger dismount before he sees us. Stay there, Dan. Meet him and see what he wants. Yes, sir. Oh, ho there. Ho, boy. Ho, Mr. Granger. Ho. Dan, I followed your tracks. Yes? Yeah, but I'll tell you why. One of the boys in town said he'd seen your partners with you. My, my partners? The masked man and the redskin. Well, what about it? Oh, there you are. What about Dan's partners? Masked. Just as they told me. Good, I'm glad I found you. Why did you follow Dan? Now listen, mister. Did Dan tell you about helping me when I needed help? Yes. Did he tell you that I found the horse thief dead? He said that you reported that the thief was dead. Did you find him that way or kill him? Well, I found him that way. He'd been shot from the rim of Granger's Pass. Oh. And the buzzard that shot him done so intending to shoot me. Are you sure of that? If you infer that I'm trying to put the blame on someone after shooting him myself, you're wrong. The critter's a known horse thief, and the law was after him. Oh? If I'd have shot him myself, I'd have said so. I'd be proud of having done it. You said the shot that killed him was meant for you. But it was. And I know the snake-eyed lizard that done it. But uh, that doesn't explain why you're here. Because I want to hire your guns. Mine? There's a sneaking catamount that needs killing. If he's around here much longer, either Bart Hastings or I will throttle the vomit. If one of us does it, the law will hang us. Don't you suppose the law would hang me if I did what you want? Well, you could, Vamoose. I can't because my ranch is here. Bart can't because the girl he loves is on my ranch, my daughter Jane. Oh, well, uh, can't you prove that this man tried to kill you? How can I prove it? He'll say he recognized a horse thief and shot him. Maybe that is the case. I know better. Granger, there might be some other way to accomplish your purpose. Who is this man? Oh, he calls himself a count and prattles about his family honor and his castles. Ah, I can't think of the critter without getting a taste of bile. Uh, what's he after? He's got my daughter and my wife fair ogle-eyed with his consigned lies. He figures to marry Janie. Oh? Well, he'll do it, too. Unless he's stopped. The buzzard came here to find a wife whose pa was rich. He asked questions until he learned about my money. Then he connived to impress Jane. Where is he now? Where is he? I'll tell you where he is. He's a guest in my own house. Oh, golly. He knows I'm again him. Just the same as he knows that Jane will be a mighty rich girl when I die. He's playing his cards two ways. While he's fixing to marry Jane, he's fixing to kill me. And Jane is too moon-eyed that she won't listen to a thing I say. All she does is sit around and listen to that overdressed, underfed gopher. Ah, my lord, sit here on the veranda with me for a moment. Oh, I should see if the cook is getting supper, Oh, Carol. but a moment, one little moment. All right. Did you enjoy your ride? Ah, the ride was nice. But I hated every moment that I was away from you. Oh, Count. I'm miserable when I'm not with you. Really? I saw the sky. But your eyes, they are more blue. I saw the soft clouds. But they could never be so fair, so soft as your cheek. Oh, you say the sweetest thing. Here, my desert flower, your beauty is wasted. For you, there should be castles and palaces. And there shall be. When you are my countess. Countess? You shall have the pomp and the gaiety of a royal court. You shall have music and art and, 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 and servants. As the countess, your gowns will be of the finest silk. And your tiny feet will wear slippers of the richest brocade. Oh, I'm Oh! I can't stand it. Bart Hastings, you've been around the end of the porch eavesdropping. No such thing. You've been sneaking around, snooping. Listen here, Jane Granger. I came here to have a few words with you and heard this blister talking. I just stopped for a minute because I didn't want to interrupt. You are calling me names. You are insulting me. You ought me. to hear what some of the ranch hands around here call you. Mr. Hastings, I'll thank Jane, you. Jane, to... for the love of Mike, wake up. This four flush and don't want ain't for you. Your tiny feet will wear slippers of brocade. Oh, my Aunt Hannah. Them feet of yours wouldn't feel right in anything but cowhide boots. Why, you... you... Silk gowns. Why, you've been brought up in blue jeans. This is your kind of country. If you keep on, I... Uh, 
I will resent what you say. Oh, if you only would. Take care. I will be forced to make a challenge. Come on. Oh, Count, don't pay any attention to him. He's simply jealous. Don't stop him, Jane. Let him make that there challenge. Oh, go on. I... Should... Yeah? I would do it. But for your foolish laws, they would hung me if I ran this all through you. If you don't like our laws, why in thunder don't you go back where you came from? He's going to. Yeah? Yeah, and I'm going with him. So there, Mr. Bart Hastings. Over your old man's dead body. It may interest you to know that we're going to announce our engagement on Saturday evening. Oh. Then you'd better put him under glass. If that termite runs around loose, someone's likely to step on him. Why, you... I've got to go get something to take a bad taste out of my mouth. Oh. Now, here you are. Sit up there. Oh, oh, come. Oh, Joe, Joe, Joe. Pay no attention to him, my little flower. Use the same self-control that I display. We must not let the mouthings of menials annoy us. Oh, how, how I'd like to tell Bart Hastings where to go. Come, come, sweet Lady Jane. Let us go into the house and make plans for the announcement of our engagement on Saturday. Now, see here, Bart. This is the only bottle I got. Fill my glass, Pete. Feet in brocade. Four Oof. drinks and a half hour since you come into the bunkhouse. Why don't you go back to your own ranch to drown your sores? Gowns of silk. Pete, I sure wish he'd start a duel or something. Instead of sitting around him open, you better figure a way to get that no-good count off from this ranch. If you don't, you'll lose your girl for keeps. Wait. Huh? Open that door a little wider, Pete. Hey! That's the Count leaving Granger's house. Yeah? Who's that with him? A new cowhand? Yeah, he don't work here. Looks like an Indian. It is an Indian. My sight might be a little blurry, Pete. Are you sure that's the Count? I couldn't mistake that skinny neck no matter what the distance. Where are they going? Well, looks like they're heading for Sugar Bush. Right over there, them big maples. Pete, you come with me. Where to? We're going to powwow with that Count. Oh, no, but... He's hankering for a duel, huh? Look... If you mess him up, Jane will be madder than ever. She can't be any more mad at me, no matter what I do. Come along. No, but... I know what I'm doing. Oh, I'll go along just to see that you stop short of being hangman's meat. Tiny feet in brocade slippers. I do not like to walk in the woods. There may be snakes. What are you taking me? It only few step more. Who is it that is to talk to me? Him right there. He is masked. Good afternoon, Count. Who are you? What is it you want? Have any trouble with him, Toto? This, this, this savage, he drew a knife. He forced me to come here. How would you like to hang for murder? What? What is it you say? Count, you shot the wrong man. I... I do not know what you mean. Yes, you do. I found the tracks of your horse. I saw where you knelt behind a rock at the rim of Granger's Pass. No, no, you are a mistake. Don't lie. There's still mud on the knee of your riding breeches. I, uh... For further proof, here's the shell from the rifle you used. I, I... I found this where you waited in ambush. I deny everything. Oh, don't worry, Count. You're not going to hang. Who are you? Why do you come here? What are you after? I can understand why you want Jim Granger out of the way. You're afraid you'll interfere with the wedding. Furthermore, the sooner he's dead, the sooner Jane will inherit part of his ah, estate. I know what you want. Uh -huh. You want money. Money so you will not go to Lady Jane with the truth. Well, go to her. You cannot prove anything so she will believe it. Yes, I know that. She's blinded by your flattery. Ha. However, that wasn't my plan. See, you chose the wrong way to keep Granger from interfering. Or a share of what you hope to get. I'll show you the right way. Ha-ha! Now I understand. Oh? For pay, you will kill Granger. I guarantee that he won't interfere with you. That's all we need to know. Ice your hands! We got the drop on you. Make one move and we'll shoot you now instead of letting the law have you. I'll get your hands up. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
continue our story. Bart Hastings and the Granger cowhand named Pete kept close enough to hear the last part of a conversation between the Lone Ranger and the Count. Hush your hands! We got the drop on you. Make one move and we'll shoot you now instead of letting the law have you. Get your hands up. Uh, where you come from? We heard of plenty. Eavesdropping again. Snooping. Scheming to kill Jim Granger, huh? Just a minute. A minute, my eye. Take the guns, Pete. Keep them covered, Bart. You bet. Hold it. Oh, huh? Take a step toward me and you'll be attacked from behind. Don't pay no attention to him. Take his guns. Cut them, Silver. What the? Hey! Take them, fellow. Uh, me fix them. Good. Good. Uh, no! I'll take that gun. Oh, you ornery coyote. Does it? Steady, Silver. Steady, boy. Easy. You won't get away with this. I'll see all three of you hang. A rope, Tonto. Uh, try to rope me, huh? Uh, me fix him. Me tie him plenty oh, tight. Ornery pole cats. Wait till Jane hears about this. There. That'll hold you. Tonto, you better rope the other one before he regains consciousness. Uh, me fix him. <laughs> it was good. It was fine work. I am satisfied that you are the men I want. Ah, But how you went into action against these two who would make trouble, huh? All right, <laughs> Count. You dirty, greasy-faced skunk. You got the top hand now, but you wait. You just wait. Oh, uh, take it easy. You must be Bart Hastings. What if I am? Do you think Jane would believe you if you told her that the Count was plotting the death of her father? That fool girl... She who... wouldn't believe a word you'd say. Oh, my head. See, all right, Tonto. Uh, me got rope on him. If it hadn't been for that horse, you'd never have got me. Do you uh, know these men, Count? Oh, but yes. <laughs> you were right about that one. His name is his Hastings. The other? He's a menial, a worker. What you would call a surf name, Colin Polecat? He works for Mr. Granger. Can you uh, think up something to tell Miss Jane to account for the disappearance of these two? Lies come easy to that greasy-faced weasel. <laughs> you uh, dispose of these two, eh? You keep them out of the way. Ah, good. It is good. I will explain to the lady so it is all right. Fine. Now we'll continue where we left off. Good. The party's to be Saturday night, isn't it? That is right. Meet us right here on Saturday at sundown. We'll have everything ready for you. My sweet dog, he knows when he is defeated. It isn't like Bart Hastings to run away. I told you, my flower, that I saw him and your cow handler go away together. But that was two days ago. May they never return. Daddy, it's four days. Well, I can get along without Pete. Has anyone seen Bart Hastings? Uh, you interested, Jane? No, no. I, I just thought that maybe Pete was working on Bart's ranch. Well, Bart ain't been near his ranch. Mother, you, you invited Bart Hastings to the party, didn't you? Of course I did, Jane. But the invitation couldn't be delivered. There was no one at Bart's ranch. He's been gone five days. Do you suppose anything has happened to him? Well, not that it matters. Uh, here, Jane. You'll have to tie this necktie for me. All right, Dad. Is everything set for the big doings? Yes. It's sweet of you to accept the count. I've said all I aim to say about him, Janie. I reckon you know your own mind. Uh-huh. Is uh, Bart Hastings coming to the party? Is he back? No, I don't know, Janie. If you ain't heard from him, I reckon he's still away somewhere. Oh. There you are. Ties tied. Yeah, thanks. Mother wants you to make some punch for refreshment. I figured on it. You keep that count out of my way while I'm doing it. Where's he now? Oh, he's gone for a walk. He wanted to get a little exercise. Oh, I see. Uh, just a minute, Jane. Stand right there and let me look at you. What's the matter? Pretty as a picture with the setting sun shining on your hair. Pretty as a... A countess. <laughs> Said I should be here at sunset. I am too soon. No, we're ready for you, Count. Tato has the stuff. Ah, uh, here in paper. Let me show you. Ah, looks just like salt. In fact, we'll call it salt. I give these to Granger. Hmm? If he takes a drink, you might put some of this 
in his glass. Ah, but he may suspect, he may taste it. Here, put some on your tongue and see if you can taste it. No, 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 no. I, I take your word for it. You have my word that we've planned things so Granger won't interfere with your wedding. Oh, uh, better take this bottle with you. Put it in your pocket. What is in the bottle? Uh, use it if the wrong person gets that stuff. Ah, the, the salt. <laughs> and what of those others? Bart and Pete. We've taken care of them. Ah. <laughs> I, I know what you mean. <laughs> I wonder if you do. Now, as for to paying you, uh, uh, <clears throat> at, uh, at the moment, I am sure. Oh, don't worry about it. I'll be around when you're able to pay. Now, you'd better get back to the house. The party will start early. Yes, yes, I, I must go at once. Tonight, the party, the announcement of my engagement. Mm hmm. It's to be an evening you'll never forget. Ah, my sweet, my flower, this is an evening we shall always remember. Are you not happy? Oh, yes. Yes, Count. Of course I'm happy. Oh, the faraway look. Oh. <laughs> it is perhaps castles in my homeland that fill your mind, huh? Mm. What did you say? Oh, Jane, Jane, my dear, you must come with me. And you too, my dear Count. It is Count. the gate moment. Father is about to serve the punch. Come, we must go and be with him when he makes the announcement. Give me your hands, children. I am honored. Isn't it a delightful party? Everyone take a glass of punch. I'm just about to propose a toast. Jane, your father looks positively happy. He's either accepted the situation with good grace or changed his mind about disliking the cow. He looks like a cat with stolen cream. Here, here, Jane. Uh, take the glass of punch. Oh, thanks. Ma? Thank you. One for the count. And uh, one for me. Now I'm going to... Look! Doggone, it's Bart Hastings. I figured I'd better come to the party. Bart! Evening, Jane. Really here, Count. Hold my glass a minute. Let me shake hands with Bart for being a good sport and a good loser. <laughs> yes, sir -y. Hope you're not too mad, Jane. No, Bart. But I want you and the Count to shake hands. Uh, here, Count. Let me hold them glasses. Shake hands with Bart and everyone be friends. Yes. Yes, I am happy to shake hands. Oh, Jane, isn't this simply perfect? Uh-huh. Yeah, there, that's the ticket. Now the two of you have got a drink to Jane's happiness. Uh, here, Bart, take this. Thank you. Yeah, here you are, Count. Uh, but... Uh, uh, to Jane's happiness. Uh, uh, a moment, please. Uh, you, you got the glasses mixed. I, uh, what? This is the drink that was to be yours. You gave Bart my glass of punch. Well, what in Sam here is the difference? They're like as two peas in a pod. Sure thing. Well, here's your happiness, Jane. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Say, that's right smart punch, Mr. Granger. <laughs> well, what's the matter with you, Count? You ain't drunk to my girl's happiness. I, uh, I do not feel well. Oh, that punch will set you up. I never touch fruit mixtures. That is, You'll I, drink to my toast. I thunder, Count, you're going to drink to Jane's happiness if it kills you. I, uh, oh, hmm. do, do drink, Count. Well, what's the matter with I you? I refuse. You what? I, I, I cannot explain. You'll swallow that if I have to open your face and pull it down. By uh, darn, Bart, that ain't a bad idea. No, no. I got him. <laughs> Let me go. Open your face. Can you open it, Bart? No. Same as I would a cantankerous horse. Oh, uh, uh, now, uh, I'll swallow this, you polecat. Jane, it's quiet, Ma. I want to hear this. That's it, Bart. <laughs> it's all in his mouth. Crack his face till he swallows it. Just like treating a sick horse. He's swallowing? Yep. Yep, it's down. <laughs> I'm poisoned. I will die. Poison? Let me out of here. Let me go. You ain't going nowhere. Jane, Jane, do you hear him? You figured I'd take that drink. Oh, wait, please. Let me, let me take these. Let me take these bottles. Ain't that true? Didn't you put something in Granger's drink? I must take these. Let me drink it. You'll get to drink it when you confess, not a minute before. I, I confess? Oh, mother. How about trying to shoot me from ambush? Confess to that, too. It is true. It is true. I admit it all. While you're at it, admit that you lied about all those castles in Europe. Let me drink the antidote. Those castles. I lied about him. And those silk gowns and fancy slippers. Tell the truth now, you fake. You ain't got a nickel, have you? No, no, no. I, I am penniless. I shall die. I shall die. Let him go, Bart. All no. right. Now you can guzzle the stuff in that there bottle. Go on, drink it. 
hate is all. Oh, what's the matter? Why, it ain't nothing but castor oil. Oh, oh, castor oil? Now drink the rest of it. Empty that bottle. I cannot. Drink or I'll pour I will, I will. Good work, Bart. Make the four flusher drain the bottle. No. What? I cannot drink no more. Still a third of the bottle left. Please, I do you. Drink I it, your white livered, fancy talking polecat. <laughs> Give me that gun, Bart. Sure thing. Thanks. My flower. Don't use any more fancy talk on me. Drink that oil or I'll knock an inch <laughs> off your height. That's Texas talking, Jake. Now drink. I drink, I drink, I drink. <laughs> there, it is gone. Now let me out of here. Let me out of here. <laughs> well, he, he had it coming to him. Oh, Bart, what a fool I was. He, he might have killed my father. <laughs> Dad, you're all right, aren't you? <laughs> Shucks. All he had in that drink was plain table salt. Oh, <laughs> We had to make you see him in his true colors, honey. <laughs> but I, I don't understand. So, a, and you, Bart, where have you been? <laughs> Bart's been spending a few days in hiding with Pete. Yep. <laughs> and we had some mighty good friends in hiding with us. <laughs> to think that I figured that mask man for a murderer. Mask man? What, what mask man? And it all started, Jane, when I borrowed a horse called Victor. Well, it's too long to tell right now. We've got to announce an engagement. But the Count has left. I ain't talking about the Count. Am I, Jane? <laughs> <laughs> Come on with me, Ma. <laughs> well, the Count... Uh, Jane, you got any objection to letting the party go on? Do you hear me object? <laughs> The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>